Jed, developed by Cody, which is Cardano's over-collateralized and algorithmic stablecoin, has finally turned one year old. As a part of today's video, I want to talk about their humble beginnings, as well as what we can expect from the stablecoin here on Cardano. That said, welcome to Dapp Central. My name is Farid. This is your home for everything blockchain and crypto. And like I said, this will be a pretty brief video recapping the achievements of the Cody team and what we can expect moving forward for this stablecoin. So without any further ado, if you guys recall, the actual Jet stablecoin launched way back and it seems like a long time ago now, but this was on January 31st of 2023. It's now January 31st of 2024 and so much has come since then. If I jump over to DeFi Llama here, we can see that when the actual platform launched, they had a TVL or a total value locked amount of about $11 million. As of today, that stands at right above $20 million. So they have doubled their TVL in the last year with an all-time high of about $26 million locked in terms of TVL. Jumping over to the official JED website, we have the price of Cardano right now sitting, or excuse me, the price of a JED sitting at 2.06 Cardano with nearly 4 million JED coins or JED stable coins circulating in the ecosystem. With respect to their reserves, it actually sits pretty healthy right now at a ratio of about 483% with over 38 million ADA right now locked in their reserve. So in the event that there's ever a downturn or just a black swan event, you want to make sure that you're able to redeem your jet for a dollar in these reserves being over collateralized are able to ensure that. Now, what I want to do is jump into their latest article, which was just released celebrating Jed's one year anniversary. So it kicks off by stating it's been exactly 12 months since Jed's successful launch and fast enough, Jed became an integral part of Cardano's ecosystem with almost 40 million ADA provided to the protocol. I just highlighted their TVL, which right now sits at about 18 to 19 million dollars. But then scrolling down, this breaks down their integrations and partners. So Jed saw the likes of MinSwap, Wing Riders, and MuesliSwap, all offering yield farming for holders that provided liquidity to the platform. Jed and its reserve coin Shen were also listed on Bitru. If you're not aware, that's a centralized exchange, which it's now actually supporting more and more Cardano native assets. And on top of that, they also saw Jed integrated into various DeFi platforms, including Vi Finance, Liquid, and maker fluid tokens and more in order to enable its proper utilization and adoption across the cardano ecosystem interesting graphic here breaking down the fact that jed has been integrated into decentralized cloud storage services aka iagon we've got numerous dexes we've got launch pads music fi p2p trading nft gaming tracer coins DeFi, wallets lending and borrowing and even telecom with World Mobile. So as you guys can see here, Jet has been a huge part of the Cardano ecosystem, gaining more partners and making it that much more accessible to anybody here within Cardano. Now, another huge update that took place in the past year with Jet is the fact that they partnered up with Chainport, which is arguably one of the biggest um, bridge providers for the Cardano community, bridging, I believe it's Meld, Cornucopius, World Mobile, Paribus, and the Genius X token in and out of Cardano. So they also added support for Jed, and we actually saw Jed being available on the Binance Smart Chain or the BNB network. This was done in order to provide access to Jed on the Thena platform, which I believe is a DEX as well in that particular ecosystem. So not only did Jed launch on Cardano, they also actually went multi-chain or cross-chain in the last year as well. Now, there's also a brief section here surrounding the advantages of holding the Shen token or their reserve token in which we see the ADA that is actually locked up as a part of their reserves being staked and some of those taking rewards going back over to Shen token holders. So it states here that at the time of writing this article, around 900,000 ADA had been listed or distributed amongst Shen holders. So even if you're not necessarily utilizing Jet, you can still earn by holding their collateral or their reserve token which is the Shen token. Now, right, be right below that or right after that, there's a nice section here, which I want to recap surrounding the stability of the peg and the redeemability 
of Jed. As you guys are probably more than aware, that's going to be one of the biggest risks here that we have with stable coins, just always having the ability to redeem them for their actual value. Now, with an over collateralized stable coin, we have to make sure that there's always enough in the reserves. And I just showed you guys that as it stands right now, we have about 485% um, above the actual amount of Jed that's in circulation. So right now, that does seem to be pretty stable. And again, keep in mind that with different stable coins, they all utilize different pegs. So more recently, there's been conversations surrounding fiat backed stable coins, which are actually backed by hard cold dollars in a physical bank. Whereas with Jed, we're backed by an over collateralized amount of ADA and Shen. So it states here, while a healthy reserve ratio ranges anywhere between 400 and 800 percent over collateralization which means that you have anywhere between four times the amount in the reserves than that's currently available in circulation supply all the way up to about 8x or about 800 percent now upon launch a robust 600 percent reserve ratio had already been bootstrapped to the protocol and within just three days alone that amount surpassed 800 now i want to quickly go ahead and take a look here at the actual um stability mechanism for jed which highlights in which circumstances or in which scenarios you have the ability to actually mint Jed or uh, mint Shen. So anytime that the reserves are below 400%, which is basically stating that there is becoming less, there is less liquidity or less collateral available, um, you will no longer have the ability to actually mint more Jed because again, that would put more stress on the current collateral or on the current reserves. Now, you do have the ability to burn Shen, which would actually relieve some pressure from the current collateral or the reserve ratio. On the other hand, when there's um, less than the 400% in the collateral reserves, you do have the ability to mint Shen, which again is adding more collateral. And then you have the or you do not have the ability, excuse me, to burn Shen because again, that would actually reduce from the collateral there as well. So that was this bottom row here that I just highlighted. Now, anytime that we're in between that range of 400 to 800 percent, you have the ability to mint and burn Jed as well as mint and burn Shen because again, that's when the protocol is extremely healthy. Now, what we saw when the actual protocol launched was around a 600% over collateralization or about 6x. And then that actually hit at an all-time high, 800%. Now, that was relatively temporary. But in that event, you have the ability to mint Jed because, again, there's a huge amount of collateral available. You have the ability to burn Jed freely, again, because there's enough collateral. However, you can no longer mint any more Shen, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's just that the team doesn't want to have extra or too much collateral, which again, in my eyes, um, is never really a bad thing. So we've seen that scenario play out once, but we also have seen the actual other scenario, which is where Jet has fallen below 400 play out as well, where we just have to wait for more collateral to come online in order to begin to mint any more Jet while you can also burn it in order to release some of that pressure there. So jumping back over into the article, what I want to highlight here is that it states that today the reserve ratio sits at a healthy 505%. If I jump back over here right now, again, that article was released earlier today, the collateral ratio sits at about 482%, which is still very positive, um, allowing the mint and burn of both Jed and Shen. Now, regardless of the ratio for the reserves, Jed's peg has kept even throughout the turbulent market conditions and black swan events of 2023. I think they're referring to the SVB banking crisis where we saw a ton of stable coins and just Cardano and just crypto assets overall taking a huge drop in price with Cardano dropping, I believe it was around 25% in a single day. We also had additional black swan events where um, it was announced that Cardano would be listed as a security in some of the allegations coming against Coinbase and Binance from the SEC or the Securities Exchange Commission. So those were two pretty big black swan events that tested the peg for Jed. And there's a really awesome graphic here, which I want to highlight. So it states that Jed was always redeemable in the black swan event times for its worth, which is $1. If I blow this up here, we've got a historical graph depicting the collateral ratio or the reserve ratio for Jed over the last year. So as you guys can see there, when we first kicked off super healthy at about 599% 
collateral ratio that began to kind of wane all the way through June. And again, this was around the time that we saw the SVB crisis, followed by an additional drop off around the time that Cardano and some of these other top 10 cryptos are also listed as uh, potential securities being sold by SEC or excuse me, by Coinbase and Binance. Now, in the past couple of months, obviously, the price of Bitcoin has rebounded from there. We've seen Bitcoin go all the way from about $24,000 to a maximum of about $49,000 this past month in January when the Bitcoin spot ETF was officially approved. And since then, the collateral or the reserve ratio for Jed has also followed a very similar trend, rebounding from an all-time low of about 286% all the way to where it is about right now at about 400 to 500 percent so again things are looking healthy and again this was a testament to the fact that even under some of these very stressful situations jed was always redeemable for its value which was a single dollar in closing it states here that with respect to the development during the past year a few developments and protocol enhancements have been implemented to the jet protocol and i'm going to take a look at their roadmap that was released about a year ago but it states this includes multi-wallet support to more than five brand new wallets user interface improvements to include a better view of both jet and shen status as well as chain index optimizations that were also applied to the protocol now in closing I'm going to jump over here to the JET upgrades. So this was released about a year ago, and this breaks down, you know, the JET stablecoins development and everything that they're aiming to do about a year ago. I believe that they're able to actually get all of this completed, and we're now expecting the launch of JET version 1.7. Now, I do want to do a little bit more research to figure out exactly what we can expect with that brand new version or that upgrade, which is going to be V1.7. But as it stands right now, we do have, I believe, extended JET dynamic fees and enhanced delegation support for those Shen token holders. That will do it here for today's video. Again, really trying to provide more clarity, stability, and just going ahead and congratulating the Cody team, right, for their hard work and efforts with respect to Jet finally turning one year old. Again, I know there's been a lot of conversation surrounding adoption of Cardano through the use of stablecoins. Jed's name has popped up in the conversation. IUSD has popped up in the conversation. And more lately, USDM or the um, stablecoin from Mahen, which is supposed to be fiat back, has also come up in the conversation. So even though there's been a lot of tough talk happening surrounding stablecoins, I wanted to take this opportunity to bring some positive news and highlighting that one of the first stablecoins launch on Cardano has now turned one year old. That said, if you guys enjoyed any portion of today's video, I would really appreciate you if you could smash that thumbs up. If it's your first time stopping by DAP Central and you want more content like this, consider subscribing to the channel. And last but not least, if you have any questions for me surrounding anything that we've chatted about as a part of today's video, then make sure to go ahead and leave a comment down below. That said, and as always, I will see you guys in the next video.